Hello and welcome to this video which is all about the halogens, which are also known as group 7 elements. So halogens are in group 7, which means they have 7 electrons in their outer shell and they're going to form minus 1 ions. So their reactivity increases as you go up the table. So fluorine up here is the most reactive and it is the least reactive and their melting and boiling point increase as you go down the table. So you need to know that fluorine um, is a poisonous yellow gas, chlorine is a poisonous dense green gas, bromine is a poisonous, very volatile, which means it evaporates easily, so it's going to be smelly, dense red or brown liquid, and iodine is either a dark grey solid or a purple vapour. There's no liquid form, it sublimes, which means turns from straight from a solid into a gas. So a really interesting thing that the halogens do are displacement reactions. A more reactive uh, halide, which is the iron form of a halogen, will displace a, a less reactive one. So fluorine up here is the most reactive. So if you have fluorine reacted with potassium iodide, the fluorine is going to kick out the iodine and we're going to get iodine and potassium fluoride. Chlorine is higher up and more reactive than bromine, so reacting chlorine with sodium bromide is going to kick out the bromine and we're going to end up with bromine and sodium chloride. The halogens are generally found as diatomic um, molecules um, with each other. You can see that um, fluorine, uh, chlorine um, any of the halogens both need to gain one electron and a really easy way for them to do this is by sharing them in a covalent uh, bond. The other thing they do a lot of is ionic bonding. So a metal and a non-metal are going to do ionic bonding and here we're going to have a salt formed. In this um, lithium wants to lose one electron and fluorine wants to gain one electron so the electron just moves over and then lithium becomes a plus one ion and fluorine becomes a minus one ion. Okay, starting to get slightly trickier now. The You need to understand, especially for the higher tier, why things further down the table are less reactive. And this is all about the attraction between the positive nucleus and the negative electrons. So the nucleus is positive, the electrons are negative, so they attract each other. And the nucleus wants to pull electrons in. So the ones that it's really close to, it has quite a lot of pull over. And the ones that it's not very close to, it doesn't have a lot to pull over. So you can see here, I've drawn like a scale of the attractiveness that the nucleus has to the electron. This is a really um, rough and ready and not very accurate representation. But I think it makes things quite clear. Um, every time there is another electron shell, it kind of gets in the way of the nucleus trying to attract things. And this is what we call shielding. This is a really important word for your exam. So you can see here, every time there's a new electron shell, there is, there is, the nucleus has less and less pull over this electron, which is why as we go down the table, there are more electron shells, so the nucleus is going to be able to pull in um, new electrons. Um, it's going to be harder for it to pull in new electrons, so it's going to be less reactive. Here we have fluorine and chlorine, and you can see that the positive nucleus here doesn't have too far to get um, to the, the pull doesn't have to go very far. There aren't many um, electron shells in the way, whereas a positive nucleus of chlorine has quite more, a lot more electrons in the way. So it's going to find it a lot harder to pull in new electrons, and the pulling in new electrons is what it needs to do to react. <laughs> 